Hey everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Hey, you ever want to make a teeny tiny little journal just for fun? Somebody asked me if I would show how to make a teeny tiny journal. They watched me, I think on my first video, going through my coffee uh, trunk in the living room where I store a lot of my old original journals and I had some teeny tiny ones in there. So I found this super teeny tiny one. It's a little one signature journal, very unintimidating and anybody can make this. And I just used um, some embroidery floss to uh, tie it. It's not even attached. I just, uh, I just tied it around it. And um, it says notes on the front. And this pretty little, uh, it reminds me of like a, a Asian fabric. It's just very beautiful. And let's see what it, I don't even remember what I did inside. Let's take a peek. Um, apparently I put a leaf. I'm, I'm, you know me, I'm always putting a leaf on something. Uh, let's see, this book belongs to me apparently. <laughs> That's cute. Um, okay, I was writing notes to myself. Okay, here I go revealing all my secrets. Okay, it looks like I'm I'm talking about the weather and the rain. Oh my gosh, I guess it looks like I'm uh, remove this or there's no finish line. Track your time, remove. I don't even know what I was writing about. I'll have to I'll have to uh, go back and read this, but very interesting. I actually journaled in my very tiny journal. Oh, I'm talking about my old puppies. Oh, oh. All right, so anyway, before I give away any of my deep dark secrets, <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know we're in here. Okay. Oh, that's, it looks like happy stuff. So that's good. Um, let's make one of these little babies. And yes, apparently you can journal in them. Oh, that was a bit of a surprise. There you go. Okay. So let me just put you over here for a second. And um, this classically happens to me when you make a lot of things, sometimes for, you forget how you made them. So I'm going by feel. I'm thinking, what did I make this with? And I'm thinking at the time it was probably packaging of some sort. And I, uh, I have a bag of packaging and I can't quite put my finger on it, but I did come up with the bag of junk mail. So I got a direct mailer card, but you can use anything that's just a little thick, like cardstock or even chipboard or even some of that thicker um, scrapbook paper, you know? And if you have to, double it up a little bit, but just um, you want it thick, but not too thick because we're gonna, we're gonna make a, a spine in it. Okay, so let's just see how big this guy actually is. How tall are you, huh? How tall are you, you little baby, little stinker boo? Let's see. No, not you, little baby stinker boo. Yeah, my little sunshine is like, what, what, mom, what, what now? No, everything's fine, son. Everything's fine. Relax. All right, let's just draw a little. Okay, you have to be that tall. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Hang on. Okay, um, so he is about three and an eighth inches tall and about approximately two inches wide. So we want to cut a piece that is going to accommodate all of that. So let's just do this. It doesn't have to match exactly, but this happens to be, I think, probably the smallest one I made. So we'll just go with that general flow of events. And let's clear the deck here. I thought I cleared the decks pretty well. Apparently not. <laughs> There's always something on the desk, right? Okay, here we go. And we're just going to cut out this little piece of something a little bit stiffer than coffee, copy paper. And uh, you could probably even double or triple up copy paper if that's all you had to get the right thickness. Just use some glue stick or something or sew it together. But this is, okay, stay still. We're just going to use the old craft mat and cut this. Back it just a little bit. Okay, there we go. Looking at my little faint pencil lines. Does that look pretty? Yeah. Okay, here we go. All right, we got that. And then we got, <clears throat> we got this little guy. So I hope you guys are having fun today. Hope you're getting some papery uh, craftiness happening in your world. Hope you're, hope there's pleasantries coming your way. And if it's not, just, just don't open the door. That's what you do. Yeah, you just stay inside, safe in here. <laughs> ah, okay. Oh, don't answer the phone either. Yeah, there's a good one. <laughs> and don't look at the news, whatever you do. Ah, yeah, I know. Um, it's good to keep our hands occupied, isn't it? Yeah, we're, we're focused, we're doing stuff, we're making stuff. Okay, so basically we have a little template. And I'm going to say that's probably thick enough because I'm going to wrap some fabric around it, so that's going to make it even thicker. And I did the in, I did the outside to the inside wrapperoo here, so that's a pretty easy technique. But let's, let's figure out where our spine is. And now this little spine 
he measures, oh, it can't be more than a half an inch, let me see. Barely, an excuse of a half of an inch. Okay, so let's put you in the middle. Um, there, trying to find center, never find center. Um, and if it doesn't work, we're just gonna trim it. So there you go. Okay, I'm not gonna make a mark right on the center because I wanna be a little to the right and a little to the left. Um, so probably a quarter inch to the right and a quarter inch to the left of this mark should give me um, a half inch spine. Okay, stay still. All right, so I'm just using one of these things to mark it. Uh, these things probably have a name. I have no idea what it is. All right, here we go. Not pretty good. Maybe that's a little wide. Go back in there a little bit. Okay. I always try for, you know, I, I, I try and measure it and it just never works. Never, no, no matter what I do. So yeah, whatever. <laughs> we just work around it. We find our ways. Okay. And probably old bone folder will help here. It's nice to get that little crisp, crispness to the spine folds. There we go. And make sure everybody's all nice. And now we have a nice little base to work with. That's pretty easy. Actually, that came out pretty well. Um, <clears throat> these little guys are so cute and non-intimidating. Okay, so this is from a pillowcase. And I thought it might be nice to wrap this in. That might work out really well. Okay, so let's do this. All right, let's just cut a piece off. Is that long enough? I don't know. Okay, cut about like five or six inches, something like that. That should be plenty because that's going to open up here. Now this thing is double thick because I got the top of the pillowcase. So let me... I'll make sure I have enough. Oh, if I open it up, I'll have enough, but then I'll have a, well, let's just see what happens. Okay. Um, so sometimes you're wondering what to do with the pillowcase top, those, um, you know, the folded over edge. Oh, we've got all sorts of pieces and parts. Look at all these gifts from the universe, things we can make. That's wonderful. All right, so there we go. We just need about maybe a little half inch around. That would be plenty. And i just go ahead and cut this. Pretty easy cut in here. And just think how cute these would be for stocking stuffers or to hang on a gift. Wouldn't that be adorable? That'd be so adorable. And you might pique somebody's interest into the grand world of junk journals. Okay, so I have a fold there. Let me see if I can work with that fold and hide it right there. I think I can, I think I have enough. Okay, um, and we're gonna pull out the old Fabrifix glue. Clear silicone glue, fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. You've never seen the bottle. There it is. And I transferred it into a Sugar Bell's icing piping bottle just for simplicity's sake. Now, um, you could probably do a couple things here. You can put Fabrifix here and just smear it down. But you could also put a glue stick here because this is not a big project. So there's not a, a lot of demand. And you technically, you don't even need to glue the back because when you glue it, when you wrap it around and glue it, that snugness, if you do it snug enough, It'll actually hold your project right where it needs to be. Okay, get in the center, Pam. Try for center. Okay, trying for center. There we go. Okay, now you wanna do a quick check. Just make sure everybody's flatty, flat, flat. And um, if you have a little bit of show through, and um, you can take a little piece of white paper and put it underneath here, and that will handle all of that. So let me see if I can find a little piece of white paper. Okay, I'm going to open this up quickly because I see I'm having color show through. And I'm grabbing an old envelope and I'm stealing a piece. It would be nice if I cut it, but I don't have time for that. <laughs> so I'm just going to put this guy on here. There you go. There you go. Settle down. All right. Whoop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see if I can get it. Right shape, right size. I can trim it. Okay, let's try that. I'm just going to come along here. Oh, these are fabric scissors. Don't do it, sister. Okay. Because yeah, they'll just get dull faster, so you want to protect your fabric scissors. Uh, and only use them for fabric. Okay, so there's no glue there. We need glue. Um, so that's a good way if you have fabric that shows through a little bit. Just put a little white paper down. Yeah, cures everything. Here's everything. Okay, now smoosh, smoosh. Okay, and I think the back is okay. I don't think anything really shows through there. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and just glue this down. Little dabaluya, little dabaluya, little dabaluya, little dabaluya. Yep, and gonna do the right angles here. It's okay if it's not perfect, but um, that's what we shoot for. 
and fold it down. It's pretty thin fabric, so it's not going to bulk up much on me, but you can do the cut away the edge to get rid of some of the bulk if you choose to do that. Um, and we just go around the outside with a nice little bead of Fabrifix glue and we bring it home and tie the knot there. And then we, uh, you can do this. This is a nice little way to do it. Of course, it's also how you get glue all over your mat, but uh, it works really well. And it's always good to like make it a little tighter, like come in with your thumbs and give it the, the, the tightness. Yeah, you want your fabric tight. Okay, here. And there. Okay. So we're all in. We are in like Flynn. All right. So now what we want to do, where's our little book? Here's our little book. Put uh, um, something on the inside. And I just love this caramelized color. Let me go find some of that. I'm searching. I found some of this inside of a book page. Uh, inside of a book page. You know, like the first, oh, what's that? Oh, that's kind of cool. Found, found something out, a little secret note that somebody left in there. Um, but the first page of a book, which I love, and this one happens to be the marble design. I think I'm going to use that. Let's see, did I go all the way across? Probably did, yeah. This is a thinnish material. It's okay. It's not super thick, not super thin, so I think it's going to play well. Um, okay, yep, no, felt something on my leg, and Sunny's over there, so I had to double check, and it's just my microphone cord. Yes. <laughs> Had to make sure what that was. <laughs> okay. Probably would have been better if I marked it on the plain side, but that's okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and cut this down. And these little fun things are just so darn cute and they're so easy and it's a great way to use up scraps. So if you have anything like packaging or scraps or anything like that. You can make so many cute little journals out of it and you really don't need a lot of supplies because it doesn't take much paper. I mean, look at the small amount of paper I'm using here. It's very, very small. It's literally teeny tiny. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay, we have our little piece. Okay, so that is going to go here. I'm just going to glue it down and then I'll train it when I when I have it in place. I think I'm going to use Fabrifix here because I want a good, strong, quick grab. You can use any glue here. A wet white glue will work fine. Probably a, a, a good glue stick will work fine. It's a small project, but if uh, like, you know, uh, like a glue stick that actually holds, not like one of those, um, you know, the ones from Dollar Tree, like it's like you put it on and it, it wasn't even there. It's like somebody just spit on it and, uh, <laughs> you know, it got a little wet, but that was it. There was no glue hold. I don't know. That was just been my experience. So. Okay, there we go. Hand iron, hand iron. Okay, and just give that a second to grab. And here we have our little, our little thing. So I think while we're sitting here, we're just waiting. Let's, um, it doesn't take that long, but I thought I'd ink it on the outside because I think that would look really cute. Not necessary, but just a little look. Make it look a little bit um, vintage. I like the vintage look and this little gingham style design. I think that lends itself to an old little book from days gone by. Okay, let's see if we're ready to fold, fold, train, fold, train. No squeaking. You're, you're training your paper to uh, fold where the spine is. Okay, so I think I'm going to come along here and also emphasize the little spine because I think that will just look so cute. Oh, I think I could make like a thousand of these today. Just I could just sit here and make little teeny tiny journals. I think that they're just so cute. So cute. I mean, for adults, for kids. I mean, who doesn't want a little journal like that, right? You stand up and then leave the room because, that, yeah, that's all we have to say. Okay, so what do we have next? Um, let's put in our, what did I use? Different, like leftover strips, apparently. That, okay, so let me get my leftover strip bucket. Hang on. Okay, you know those long things that, you know, every time we make a journal, we end up with all this stuff? Well, this makes great paper for uh, little, little journals. And um, let's see, are you wide enough? Not quite wide enough, but we could stagger you. Or, or, here's another idea. We can make a smaller journal, but, um, and we could glue papers together, but that'll take a bit. So let's um, just grab a piece of any paper. Okay, here's a piece of something. We got tear in it. That's fine. We embrace our tears in life. Yep, yep, here we go. Um, 
And let's just start with kind of folding this up. Now I guess if I want the lines to go this way, this, this particular thing has lines on it, so it would be nice if the lines went that way, wouldn't it? Sure, yeah. Okay, so let's just see. You want to come to about here. I'm just using the journal to measure. A little shorter than the journal, so it stays tucked inside. Let's just double check. Where are they right? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Can you see that? It's about the right height. And then I'm just going to go back and forth a bit, and then we're going to cut um, the edges off. Not all of them, just some of them. <laughs> and uh, we're going to go from there. Okay, let's see. How do you go? Okay, that's okay. Even if he doesn't go up all the way, we can have pages that are not all the same size. So this is going to be the spine. Hmm, I wonder if I can get two out of here. Maybe I can fold that again. Yeah, let's see what we got now. Will that work? Yeah, I think that's good. That's going to be pretty good. I'll never remember how I folded that. So I'll probably have to rewatch the video, but that would work exactly because we have a nice fat little signature there. Let me get another paper. Um, see if I can do that again. I'll probably never be able to do that again. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. So grabbing another paper. All right. This is a coffee, uh, a college rule, coffee dyed paper. doesn't have to be coffee dyed. It just could be any paper. So I'm going to start like that. All right. I think this is what I did. Probably not. Okay, so I'm going to make it the same height. That would be nice. And then when I, I can get it exactly the same height when I trim it. So don't fret. I don't want anybody fretting. No fretting going on. All right, so that's about it. Okay, so now we can just kind of fold back and forth with this guy. See how that goes. And he's got a shorty, but that's all right. I think we can still work with him. Oh, and then what I did was I folded it in half, right? Okay, there we go. Now this is such a little guy. I was thinking maybe one, one signature might be plenty for this little guy, you know? And I have no idea how many pages this is going to create, but let's see if we can figure it out. You could even leave some pockets and stuff in there, but I'm just going to go old school and just trim the edges. So I guess you could make it about the same size of your journal and then because you're going to trim the edges, then maybe um, that'll make it fit inside the journal. But let's let's just see how everything is working out here in Oz. All right, let's let's do a little side trim. Okay. All right, how cute. Okay, and now we're going to do a little top trim because we have to free the pages. Okay, and just a little skinny, just a little skinny. Oh, oh should have used the cork ruler. <laughs> what am I doing with this one? Because I couldn't find the cork ruler. Where is it? Is that it? Oh, ah, found the cork ruler. Okay, back over here. Using the cork ruler so it doesn't slip. We don't want to lose any appendages. You could also use scissors here. It's not that thick. Um, oh, ah, ah. There we go. There we go. All right. And the bottom. Okay. I'm just going to use my little bone folder to straighten things out here. Put you along the spine or along the line and then I can cut straight. See, no matter how much I try and align things, they're always not aligned. Oh, look at you. Okay. Here we go. Whoop, moved it. Back you go. Stay still. It's like a little jumping monkey, you know? <laughs> All right, here we go. All right. There we go. All apart. Mm-hmm. All right, now I take all that stuff away. And now we have, um, we should have free pages. There's a little folded thingy. It happens, it happens. Do you fit? I think so. All right, so... Um, no, we're just going to pop that little guy in there. Oh, you're a little wide, aren't you? Yeah, I see that. Okay, well, we're going to have to snip off a little more. Okay, we'll just do that. Okay, here we go again. Yep. I, I really do enjoy using the craft knife, but you don't have to use a craft knife. Um, just when things get thick, it's a little easier to do with a craft knife. 
All right, now you're going to sit inside and everybody, yeah, now we're good. Okay. Okay. Now, um, you could poke holes many ways, all, AWL, needle. This isn't that thick. You probably get through it, but we've got two layers plus fabric. So I'm going to go with the old never fail me now. Um, crop dial to big bite, but you could do it with just poking a hole through brute strength. So I'm going to do one and put these in the middle three. Okay. So, um, and I'm going to use the center position, not all the way to the right, not all the way left, but the center position, which is three sixteenths. No, sorry. It's one eighth. Yeah. And that means the small hole puncher comes out there. So I'm just going to go ahead and punch these one. Don't need giant holes here Two, And you could probably, like I said, do this with a needle or an awl or a ice pick. Not sure if I said ice pick, but there you go. All right. So now we have to line this up and you can arrange these like stagger them. Maybe you want one high, one low, however you want to do it. Oop, okay. There we go. All right, but just make sure that the tops and bottoms are gathered. And then we have a good idea to grab a little um, paper clip because because things like to run around. You know what I mean? They like to run around. All right, let me stagger you a little bit in the center. You don't have to stagger them, but it's just, you know, I was here. I'm staggering. All right, so I'm just going to clip these together. Let's make my top front so I know that top, top front of the booklet, the inner signature. And now I'm just going to sit this where I really want it to sit in the journal because that where I make my marks is where this is going to sit. Okay. Okay. So we have one here, we have one here, and we have one here. Okay. So now I'm going to turn this over. Get the old crocodile two big bite. Haven't changed the setting. It's on the same spot. And I'm just going to punch those holes. One, two, three. Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to take a yarn or a darning needle, but something with a big eye so I can easily thread it and it's not pokey at the end. So I can easily work with it without injuring myself. And I'm going to use some blue yeah, I think that'll look nice. The blue um, embroidery floss that I got at the thrift store, which is always handy. So if you see that stuff, it's great junk journal stuff. You want to test for integrity if it's vintage, make sure it doesn't come apart because sometimes little um, fibers degrade over time. All right. Yes, that was the that was the finger the finger wet trick. Everybody knows that one. Okay, so and and we need this piece should be three times the height of your journal, um, and that pretty much goes for um, this, no matter what size journal you have, that'll give you enough thread with a little bit extra. So all is good in Denmark. <laughs> um, all right, here we go. Now, I, of course, forget which way is up. See, I should have, I should remember, but I think I did the swirlies up, but if I'm unsure, I come along and I align to see if they're in the right spot. And that looks pretty good. So I'm pretty sure that's up. Uh, but it's a good idea to maybe throw a paper clip on here too. So just so you remember front up and uh, here we go. These little guys, I think one signature is fine. You could put two, but it gets a little tight in the spine to punch more multiple holes. So you could put more pages in for sure. But uh, as you saw, I just used two full eight and a half by 11 size pages to fill this journal and through the center. There we go. I know. We want to make sure we have, this is no different than making a big journal. Same thing. Um, uh, it's just a smaller size. Just make sure you have enough on either side and make sure that your little wing strings go underneath the main bridge. And then you want to pull snug. You don't have to check if see if it's the right holes because you've only got one set of holes. So that's okay. And then do it the other way, right over left, left over right to lock in your knot. And then maybe throw one more in for good measure because we don't know if we did it right. Okay, because I don't want it coming apart on you. Okay. And um, somebody had a question about um, 
their signatures get loose over time, it's probably the string you're using. Sometimes certain strings will slide and you don't get that good grip or you haven't done the right over left, left over right lock knot so it doesn't slip. Um, or if you have stretchy string, it can loosen, you know, so those things are important to just keep in mind. And there we go. So we want to train our paper. And it's a good idea to do it both ways, but really only the front way is the most important. But that helps your book sit a little, a little flat. That's so cute. Look how cute that is already. It's such a little cute little book. And um, okay, so we want to put a little uh, something on the front. Okay. And you can just uh, type this out on your computer and print it out. Or if you just want a big page of these, I have a bunch of these. Um, just type in words in my search and you'll find um, a bunch of uh, different words that you can put on here. Um, what about to imagine. That's a nice word. All right, here we go. Now, you could cut it out nice and square like I did in that one. Or you could do a little tear job like this one. And... Uh, Totally your, your choice. And now that you've made one of these, when you make the next one, it'll be easier and easier. And you can mass make these. Like you can cut out a bunch of the right size covers right away um, or, you know, in the beginning and then just do each uh, section as you go. Let me find a little piece of material. Okay, this little guy was stolen by Sunshine. So I think we're going to put him here. Maybe we don't need all of him. Uh, let's take a little piece. Maybe we'll scrunch you a little bit. We could do that. Let's try that. All right. Cool glue down. And we'll do the scrunch maneuver. Oh, that's a better viewing here. Yeah. Oh, okay. And weird little string. Okay, goodbye. I'm going to scrunch you this way. I scrunch you this way. I'm going to do a corner scrunch. How about that? Just sort of like a, a little a little something in the corner. Become something. Become something. Okay. <laughs> a little lower. A little lower. Okay. All right. I'm confused. I don't know which way you want me to go. I'm not sure either. Just glue on. Glue. Glue. Okay. Okay. I'm gluing. I'm gluing. All right. And give that a second to grab. Okay, and we're down. Oh, no. There we go. All right. Oh, no. Okay, there we go. Are we good? Yeah, there we go. All right, now we can come along and we can put that like here. Yeah, that is cute. Okay. A little more Fabrifix. Do, 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 do. There's that song again. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, there we go. Just a little tiny book. Oh, and we want to maybe do a a little closure for you and you could put eyelets in and make it a tie closure but I, I think this little guy is just you know he's just just needs he doesn't even need a little closure but we're just going to make a little closure for fun all right so i got about i don't know maybe 12 inches and then doubled it over so i got like 24 inches no probably not that long 18 but if you want to make it so it stays just tuck it under here and and actually what you can do is you can you can do this. There you go. No, it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to stay. You've made a slip knot. And now, I mean, you could do, you could go around like this and do a tuck. I think this is a little long. Um, you could also have it go opposite directions. Like so. Um, wrap once that way. Wrap once this way and everybody meet over here and we could do a little tie bow this way. Bow tie. <laughs> yeah, and then just do a little bow for just a little alternative. Um, so a lot of different ways you can do the tie off on these guys. Um, I probably trim that a little bit. It's a little long. There we go. Okay. So there you go. How cute is that? No muss, no fuss. And then you can just decorate the inside however you like. You can put some rubber stamps or some little notes to yourself. But you have this little teeny tiny 
journaling space. Isn't that cute? It's just so cute. So um, that's a very easy way to make a very tiny journal. And um, I hope you enjoyed this process. I had a lot of fun um, doing with this, this with you. I could. Um, I have other versions of um, small journals that I want to show you as well. So those will be coming up. They're a little different style, a little different technique, but what the heck? Let's make some journals. Um, so my videos, they oh, you want to see sunshine? Sure, come here, come here, Sunny, come here. All right, Mom, I'm, I'm ready for my cameo. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally ready. Okay. All right, so uh, uh, you entertain the folks while I go through the spiel. <laughs> and for those of you who have heard this, thank you so much for enduring. <laughs> and everybody who's new, well, welcome everybody new. Hello, my mom uh, gave me a little face trim. Didn't go quite as planned, but there was wiggling involved. There was wiggling. Yes, there was. I'm so tired. I could just pass out right now. All right, Sonny, you hold the fort. And... Um, <laughs> uh, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Yes, they do. And uh, I have a free monthly emailed newsletter uh, where you get a free digital image emailed to you every month and a note from the bookmaker and a checklist of supplies. And um, um, uh, so hoping uh, you sign up for that. And oh, I want to say a shout out to uh, Stella Brosh. Hi, Stella Brosh. How are you? Hi, Stella. We see you. And um, I have a Facebook group. Yes, there's a Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges. Um, that's right. And seeing what you guys make from these videos. Yay! And what else? We have an Etsy shop where I put my fundals, which are ephemera collections, and digital kits. And when I finish the journals, I pop them in there. And I also put in some bundles, different creations that I make. I just bundle them up and put them up for sale. Sometimes I do a big uh, video and, and social media splash. And sometimes I just sneak them in there. She sneaks them in there a lot. And um, uh, uh, you can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and I have an Amazon shop if you're looking for favorite tools and supplies. Mom, this is getting a little uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> like, for example, if you're looking for, whoop, what's that? It's a bone folder. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, where'd that bone come from, Mom? I need to know. Okay. Now, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, all the links are down in the drop down box below. I do have an Amazon shop if you're looking for favorite tools and supplies. And um, click the notification bell if you want to be notified of new videos. Okay, do the head massage, Mom. I, I love the head massage. Um, and remember that fun can be simple. And create with reckless abandon, everybody. And we can't wait to see you next time. Take care. Bye. Peekaboo. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>